Okay. Right. So this is a little tutorial so we can get ourselves ready for um, uh, burger in a couple of months and uh, for any of the uh, Pyrenees events. <laughs> <coughs> downloads, maps, and all that stuff turned into your booklet for the Vince or Twin Shot Trial Finder. So you've been sent this A3 overmarked map, and that's going to be your route planner. You've downloaded and printed out the pages of the checkpoint booklet, which now you've loaded into the vinyl checkpoint booklet, which arrived blank. So that's ready there. Uh, the next thing you need is a, a computer with the folders on it that you downloaded from the link that I sent you. Uh, the notes you can either use before this process or after this process, it really is up to you. And a printer over here to, uh, to print out our route sheets. So that's the equipment. Here's how you do it. So, you've been studying this uh, map and you know where the hotel is. In this instance, it's up here. And you've um, decided to work, uh, uh, you've worked out a little route of the order that you're going to try and... Uh, visit the checkpoints. My rough rule of thumb is have them in blocks of something like five checkpoints in a, in a cluster, in, 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 a, in a necklace. Um, when you've done those five on the day, then have it make a decision about uh, what you're going to do next. Can we do the next five? Can we do some of the next five? And then if you do them in packets of five, that, which I think would probably take you somewhere between um, two and three and four hours to, to get five of them done, depending on your ability. Uh, then you can see how you go. There's no need to kind of create one epic loop system as one kind of huge blob of itinerary, okay? So, for the purposes of this demonstration, um, I'm gonna uh, say that what my team and I would like to do is start from the hotel, drive down the motorway here, and then we're gonna start with these, this little cluster here, and then we're gonna work our way over this way, and then we're gonna come up here in the afternoon and maybe try and get some of these off and finish off uh, here. So that overall um, strategy is like 15 miles of tarmac, 10 miles of tarmac, we'll then trail right our way back to the hotel. That's what that's what my team's going to do. Okay, so we've decided that we'll get down to this little town Navas, we'll do uh, 263, we'll do 234, then we'll come down We'll nip back maybe and collect 220, then we'll go north, up the north uh, ridgeline trail to 202. That's going to be our first um, little cluster. And my rough kind of rule of thumb is that when I print this out onto my piece of A4, you can see the, um, the grid lines here. They're five kilometers apart. So this is a 150,000 map. They're five kilometers apart. On a British map, they'd be every kilometer. On this one, they're every five kilometers. When I do my... Uh, uh, my zoom in and I, and I cut and crop and I choose a little bit of the map that I'm going to concentrate on. If it's not much more than the width of these two black lines, then you're in pretty good shape. If you're using one of the um, ICG maps, uh, which looks like this, this kind here, if you're using that, those kind of maps, okay, that look, so I've got that on the front, Mapa Topographico Nacional de España, they're like British maps. And the grid lines are every kilometre. So then we'd be saying five, uh, five grid squares wide should be our kind of thing. And that means that automatically when you, when you print that out onto a sheet of A4, it will get enlarged. It won't be a 1 in 50,000 map anymore. It'll be better than that and easier to use. So everybody's happy. So I think to put just two checkpoints on the extremities left and right of your, of your sheet that you're going to create, is actually too extravagant. It makes it almost too big. I mean, you, there's no one stopping you doing that. That, that would be the, give you the largest scale map possible. It'll make it super easy to map read off it. But I don't think it needs to be that easy. Okay, most people can cope with it a little bit better. One in 50,000 is right on the edge of, of what's bearable, especially when it gets tight in uh, very undulating areas, in upland areas. And if there's lots of other trails on the ground, one in 50,000 could sometimes not be quite friendly enough we want to move towards one in 25 sort of thing okay so here's what we're going to do so i've decided i'm uh, my little map that i'm going to make is going to be this kind of area here 
Okay, that's going to be my first sheet that I'm going to make. Uh, I'm assuming that I can use a normal road map um, uh, to get, actually I could use this map, but I could go use a, a road map to get me from the hotel down the motorway, down the main road, the motorway to Navas. But then once I come off down here, that's when I'm going to start actually properly map reading. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. First of all, I need to find my folder that's got my um, stuff in it. Here it is. And here's the folder into which I've downloaded the big burger map which is the one to 50,000 one here. So there it is in there. It's 190 megabytes, it's a huge file. So that when I double click on it, you need to be patient while that opens up. Oh, that was great, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dell computers. So there's the whole map. That, that is that, but clean as per, uh, as from the map makers and obviously without my red lines and uh, uh, stuff on it, okay, annotations on it. So the bit I want on this map is this area down here. So I click up here, edit and create, edit and create. I click on that. Oh, by the way, this software is not special um, graphic design software. It's just the normal photo editor that comes with uh, this uh, Windows 10. Okay, pretty much, I can't imagine that anybody sells a computer that doesn't have as, a, as its basic package some kind of uh, for picture editing software. So we're not going to do anything to filters and exposure or anything like that, but we are going to do edit and create. And then up here, I'm going to choose crop and rotate. And these dots on the corner here are what I'm going to be using. So I know in advance from studying this, that I want this little bit here. Okay, this is no use to me like this, obviously. So I'll just bring that guy down there. I can see easily, easily, um, uh, without a magnified glass or anything, that that's, that that's the blue of the motorway there in the middle, and that's the same as this bit here. I can just tell from my eyes that that's pretty much 55% of the way across the sheet. So I'll go down there, get that like that. That'll get bigger there, and then I can pull this across here. Okay, now we're talking, now we're getting, now we're getting nice and interesting. Now let's have another look. I've got, I've got two grid lines here. Uh, I want the right of my frame to just basically be the town of Navas. So I think I've done that. I think I'm going to, I'm going to crop in a bit more. There we go. That's a bit bullish. So I know that when I come down the motorway, I'm going that way. So I don't need any map on the eastern side of the motorway. Now, what do I want the left hand extent of my map to be? Well, I'm only going up to 202, and I can see a grid line there, even on this A3 sheet. So if I make that my left hand extremity, I'll be in good shape. Okay. So there's one, in, there's, uh, one there, which is that one, and then the next one across is that one. Oh, wow. So I only have to make that the, ed the left of the sheet. So I can come in like this, like that there. Right. Okay. That's nice. Hey, I'll lose that little bit at the bottom. Give me some more, some more definition. Now, how high up do I want to go? Well, let's have a look at 202 again. There's the grid line above it. So if I go up that far, I might even have gone too far. Maybe I'll bring it down to just a bit more down from there. So there's the grid line at the top there. Okay. And then I'll come down a touch more. Right, okay, that map there, I'm pretty sure is gonna have on it 263, 234, 220, 264 actually, and 202. They're all gonna be on that map there. Now I've got to save them. Now I'll open up a, um, a Word document, new Microsoft Word document. There it is, and I'm gonna, guess what? I'm so clever, I'm gonna call that 263 to 202. And I won't get confused because one's a JPEG, a photo, and one's a Word document. So let's open that Word document and we should find that when it comes up, it's opened up in, go, close that. Oh, it's opened up in portrait. I want it in landscape for my uh, motorcycle uh, handlebars, knowledge board type planning thing, uh, that board, orientation, uh, prefer not to say, haha, <laughs> landscape, there it is. Now, I've got a blank piece of paper. I want that to be my map. Let's insert the JPEG that I just edited and created. Insert picture from this device. There it is there. That's the one I want to insert. Double click on that. Boom. In it comes. Now then, in, the word, in Windows 10, uh, this little guy here, I always um, tend to just on the layout options, click on that. You get offered all these options here. Then choose this one here, which is called in front of text. I find that easier to use. I don't really know what I'm talking about. If you leave it like it is, it sometimes gets a bit uh, locked in to the page. So when I click on that, okay, lovely. Yeah, do I click on it once or twice? Anyway, click on that. 
Now we should find that that moves around nice and easily. Yeah, I can move that anywhere I want. So obviously I want this to map to be as big as possible. So I'm going to push him up into the corner there, right at the top, and then click and drag on this bottom corner here, click and drag with the double headed arrow until that comes down and it fills the page. Certainly, now can I afford to nip off the bottom? I think I probably can. I'm just gonna nip out the bottom of Navis there. There we go. Now I've got myself a full page map. And of course now is the punchline. Control P, I want to print that. My printer's hooked up to my uh, uh, to my computer already. I'll print that and let's see what we get. Okay. Great, here it comes. Great. Now we're doing this in real time. So I want because I wanted you to see how long this actually takes. Sort of starting from scratch. And once you get into this, it, it will obviously get faster. But there's none of the processes here are beyond even a 10 year old. So if you're not used to using computers, and I wasn't once, uh, hopefully you'll get better at this. Pull it out, isn't that beautiful? Full page map, these streaks here tell me that my color cartridges need renewing, that's annoying. Um, but that's uh, really nice there. Now, to, that's the computer part over. Now from the resources I sent you, you're ready to um, use this. Let's do a bit of maths. These two lines here, I'll put it like that, there you go. These two lines here are meant to be uh, 10 centimeters apart. If this was the normal map like this and we unfolded it and we were just using that, okay? There they are there, look. okay? This is a different one, but those, those two lines there are 10 centimeters apart, okay? And that means they're five kilometers apart on a one to 50,000 map. Right, let's put this away. See what I mean? This is, this is too unwieldy to use, okay. They're meant to be 10 centimeters apart. They're actually 19.5 centimeters apart. Do me the, uh, the service of pretending that's 20 centimeters now. So we've doubled the scale of our map. It was a one to 50,000 map, now it's a one to 25,000 map, literally twice as easy to use. Or maybe seeing as it's uh, gone up by area in a factor of four, maybe it's four times easier to use, okay? Now we can close our computer down, we don't need that anymore. Okay, and now we're gonna get our next, uh, our next thing ready. Okay, we're just gonna mark up the other stuff. So here's my map, and I know that I wanna visit, just from my big map, uh, 263, 234, 220. So let's go through them in that order. Go to my checkpoint booklet. Where's 263? Well, it's just left of the motorway, west of the motorway, and if I look here, it's at the true point of St. Genis. <coughs> Okay, now I haven't prepared this, but let's have a look. Motorway, St. Genis, there it is. Immediately I've got it, okay? So I'm gonna put my circle around there, nice and big, and carefully write 263 in a place that doesn't obscure any G detail, okay? Now I personally like to do this with the felt tip. Uh, you could do all of this on the computer, inserting shapes and circles and numbers and text boxes. That's totally up to you, but this is the easiest, I think, and most intuitive way of doing it. That's 263 mark. Now 234, that's a bit more up here somewhere. I'll just turn through my pages, but where's 234? Okay, so 234 is a trike junction by a house just east of La Sala. Can I find, oh, there it is, look. I mean, I'm not even trying. La Sala's right there, there's the house, there's the track junction. I copy it across, yep, that's it there. Here's my circle, so that's 234 there. I could be nice and careful and put the dot in now, actually. Why not, don't wanna muck that, muck that up. That one's okay, it's the actual checkpoint. Okay, right, and now where that one was what? That's two, three, four, let's find some space. Two, three, four, nice and clear. Okay, um, 220's down here. Looks like it's on a sort of trail. 220, what have we got? Where is it? 220's a uh, junction by two buildings at St. Pierre El Solo. Where's that? Oh, look, it's there. St. Pierre El Solo, really easy to find. Just check my thumbnail there. Yep, there's the dot, there's my circle. Okay, a bit naughty, a bit bad. 220, let's get that written here, uh, where there's some space. Um, 220, good. Now then I look, I go back to look at my, at my planning map. We're gonna come down the motorway, okay? We're gonna come down the motorway here, and then what I want us to do is go off-road, go up to 263, back down, and then across to 234. Then I wanna go around to this junction, and then we'll knit back for 220, 
come back to here and then we'll blast north for 202. That's our strategy. Now what I'm gonna do is mark that onto my onto my A4 sheet. This is really, really straightforward. I can see from 263 there's a trail that goes like northeast from there up to there. It's obviously this one here, okay? Probably that one that doesn't even go there. So here it is. Now then, do I overmark this with a red felt tip? I can do, but then one of the problems is I start to lose detail. It's always a problem, which a lot of people don't like. There we go, and that goes like that. So that's my first bit of trail. Maybe I can do an arrow. I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, but I wanna come up and back down. So maybe that's my um, shorthand for that. So I've come down here, I've gone up here to kilometer two, up the trail up to St. Genis, back down. Now I'm gonna go along a bit more. Okay, where's my next trail? I want to go, I want to find this trail that kind of comes off the little yellow road and wiggles its way along to 234. That obviously is this thing here, which it looks like it's grey, uh, which means it's been tarmac. But I know for a fact, actually, uh, that it hasn't been, but there we are. Right, now I'm going to use this um, uh, yellow highlighter, or am I going to, I'm going to try the green one. What's that like? Let me just get all practice now. Yeah, okay, I've got this, oh no, I've got an orange highlighter. I don't want to use green and yellow, they're already there. I want an orange or a purple highlighter. So my route's going to be along the road. Okay, I'm highlighting that. Uh, you can do this any way you want. I'm going to go along here. Yeah, and I can see that that goes, if I compare it across there, yeah, that goes, that's it there. There's no other way of doing this. Okay, that's it there. Up we go. Really, that looks pretty easy, actually. Okay, I don't think that'd be very difficult. Good. Right, there's a junction on the way there. Looks to me like we're going to come back down there and then we'll blast across to 220. Is that what it is? Let's just compare it with there. We come back from a junction here. There it is. That junction's that. So you can see how easy it is. to. Tr this is a massive area, and it looks like it's uh, not detailed or anything like that, but it's easily quite simple to find those trails on this map. It's really simple once it's printed out, okay? Um, so it's 220, goes across to 220, and then it kind of goes straight off, and then it meets a trail, it meets a road there. Yeah, that's it, good, right. So we're gonna go along here. Highlight this along. Du, 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 du. I'm going to stop it there. I personally never take my markings into the circle. That way I don't get jumbled up. So um, here I'm going to do an up and back. Okay. I call that up and back UAB. And then that's going to be a UAB as well. Up and back there. Okay. Um, and I get to 220. And then I look, have a look at my, oh, I haven't put my 202 on. So I go north from there. Where's 202? Let's have a look at that. What am I looking for? So due north, oh, it's right there at the beginning. So due north up here somewhere, Albesa, junction just north of Albesa. Oh, look, look, absolutely obvious. There it is there. See when you've blown it up like this, the map is, instead of being incredibly tangled and hyper detailed, well, it is hyper detailed, but it's like, it's really obvious. With the thumbnails here and this, so I've got the junction just north of Albesa, that's there. It's not actually Albesa. Okay, and I can see, right. Oh, uh, I can see from this map, the trail from 202 downwards goes like straight down to, and it meets that one there next to it. So I can see that that's what that is. Good. So that's gonna come across here like that. And then it looks like they've got two trails really close together, parallel, and then that goes up like that. Okay, wiggle across. Up we go. I can see that this line, hang on, I don't want to go right there, it's the wrong way. No, this line goes all the way, and I'll go a bit wider there, all the way up to Albesa, simple. After Albesa, what does it do? After 202, it basically carries on straight up there, and that'll be onto my next map, obviously, in my next thing. So, there we go. Now then, it's up to me, when I create my next sheet, ooh, let's get this labeled up, 202. Now then, what I like to do, is get a little um, uh, Capitex post-it note. I'll put that there, okay. And I'm just gonna write on it the plan for the uh, for the morning or for this, the, the plan for this section, okay. Take so motorway to Navas, okay. Exit, junction 73. Okay, what am I going to do next? We're going to go um, tarmac, then up and back 263. Then trail north to CP202. 
great. Now what I'll do is um, I'll get my um, print out, put that on there. Right, so stick that on there. Now then, that's going to be my first sheet of the first day. Maybe I could put another another sticker on here that says um, uh, what sheet it is because I don't. Once I've got twenty of these, you start to forget very quickly which one's which. And I can tell you now from experience that's really annoying. What you have to do then is find your scissors, Austin, which seems to have. Uh, oh, here they are. Yeah. So I've got the top of the. Um, Okay, now I think a really simple way of dealing with this is I'm going to call this 1A. So that means day one, the first day of the, of the event, sheet A. My next sheet on the other side of this, when I, I'll pick out a new one and do this again for, for the next section, that will be called 1B. Okay, my second sheet, sheet B, um, for the first day and so on. Then when I've got like 10 of these for, for sheet one, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1F, 1G, 1H, I'll put them in a, in a wallet or in a special envelope and then I'll know that that's day one, pretty much, okay? So, there we have it. A really nice um, uh, set of uh, uh, explanation, really easy to, uh, to follow. You don't have to be very good at map reading to make this work. Uh, there's a few annotations on it which will get jumbled about so I've just written a few notes telling me the order that I've got to do it to, to, to get them in. I would also by looking at the notes notice that there was gasoline in Navas so maybe I could start with you know the start of the day could be get gas at Navas that'd be strange I would tend to start the day um, the night before with the full of full of gas okay but that could be in my notes as well so I've got I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this and then this and then back and then this and then along here and then up to that Okay, now of course I've got to print out my next sheet. I'll stick those two together, back to back, and then that will be put through the laminating machine so it's weatherproof. Uh, there is the A4 vinyl wallet. So this is called a Nyrex folder. You can get them from a company called Lansdale Engineering in Staines, which is where I get these from. You can get this in A4. So you could buy one of these and then slip that into that if you wanted. And, the, and as we know, it's super, not super indestructible. That's not a real idea, but uh, uh, that's a way of doing it. But personally, I like the, I like the laminated thing. And then I've got them clipped onto my, uh, onto my motorcycle clipboard. And then I, the next one, I'll turn it over. If you're hardcore, it'll be upside down so that when you just flip it like that, it's the right way around. Okay, I think that's it. I want you to notice that I only used the checkpoint booklet pages, the A3 planning map, and the uh, file of the big map, the 190 megabyte file. I didn't need to use Google Earth, or any kind of GPS, satellites or anything like that to turn the combination of the booklet and the planning map into a route card for the first morning of the first day. Okay. That's it.